This is Bill McCabe. Welcome to IoT Recruiting Podcast number four. We're pleased to be joined today by Nick Evan, who is the CEO and founder of Innovators 360 and previously worked with PwC Bearing Point as Chief Innovation Officer. He's a thought leader, author of over 10 books, and a columnist for CIO.com. Welcome, Nick. Thanks very much. Great. Thanks, Bill. Good to be here. We'd like to get your perspective on digital transformation, Nicholas, some of your experience, and, and I know you actually have a, have a book about that, but what's your perspective on digital transformation and the key strategic things that business and technology leaders need to be thinking about for success? Sure. Uh, so thanks, Bill. Um, yeah, I think now that we're five or six years into the, um, the whole digital transformation era, if you will, um, a lot of companies and, and clients that I work with, um, being so many years into the um, into this um, this era, they really want to kind of you know take stock and, and kind of check their progress and kind of gauge their maturity and really kind of look at where they stand with regard to their um, competitors and peers in their in their industry. So um, you know a lot of clients are really kind of you know viewing this as a um, not just a one-time thing, obviously, but as an ongoing journey. Um, with digital transformation and um, really looking to see what are the key skills and capabilities to um, be successful and to uh, to take a leadership position. And so in the you know in a nutshell, there's really both what we might think of as perennial capabilities, things like leadership and culture and investment and strategy and digital skills and governance. These are always required, but then there's also some new capabilities specific to digital uh, success um, that I think are very important as well. So um, just to give you a quick kind of snapshot of some of those key strategic themes, um, it's things like combinations of disruptive technology using those different technology elements like IoT and AI, but in very powerful combinations with one another um, to create new value propositions for customers. So a good example there is is what Amazon's doing with their um, their Amazon Go shopping experience, for example, with the um, the checkout free shopping. A second area, another strategic theme that's uh, uh, very um, very promising is that of platform business models. So kind of the um, you know the Airbnb or the Uber type of uh, business model um, where you're matchmaking between buyers and sellers or consumers and producers of services and we start obviously starting to see this in the B2B world too as well. So uh, folks like GE with their Predicts um, IoT platform for the industrial internet is a great example of a, a kind of a B2B um, platform business model. And then a couple of um, two other quick uh, themes that I think are very important in the in the whole DX space. One is to really kind of think about leading practices in corporate innovation and companies really trying to pivot that innovation engine and really get it fine tuned and focused and aligned with the um, the corporate digital agenda. So getting that innovation engine, you know, pointed in the right direction and really closely supporting those digital objectives. And then the fourth one is really all about um, agility and skills and thinking about the, um, the workforce of the future. And, you know, the, the challenge is how do you um, think about digital services mastery? How do you quickly design, develop, deploy, manage and maintain your new digital offerings for your customers and be able to do that with great agility and dexterity? Um, so I think those are, you know, so those are some of the kind of the newer themes that we're seeing, as well as some of the perennial capabilities that are always uh, very important. Great. Now, you mentioned that we're five or six years in. And basically, talk to me a little bit about what kind of got that started and maybe some of the future themes that are be important in the years ahead. Was there a watershed moment five or six years ago or, or what in your mind kind of got this going? And then what do you see for the future? Yeah, sure. Um, so I think um, really what got it started was, um, you know, if we go back um, even six, seven, eight years, you know, the, those were really some of the beginnings of this, this kind of fusion between um, social computing and cloud computing and mobility and um, big data analytics. So that became a very um, kind of foundational era where companies were really starting to think about you know, moving to the cloud and getting the agility and cost savings there. Um, they were also thinking about social computing and, and um, you know, not only social networks um, that we, we know of so well, but, you know, even kind of inside the company, the uh, corporate social networks. And then obviously mobility has been a big, um, big player of the, of the last decade. And then, um, you know, data analytics and being able to 
you know, make better informed uh, company decisions based on analytics. So what we know is the um, is often called the the smack stack, um, social, mobile, analytics, and cloud. To me, that was you know if we wind back um, six, seven, eight years ago, that was really kind of what kicked things off for for digital transformation. And um, you know obviously today those are more table stakes where if a company is building um, either B two B apps or um, business to consumer. Those kind of attributes are things that consumers really expect, and um, you know often expect or demand in their applications. So they, you know, they want a mobile app. They want some social functionality. Um, you know, they want your your company to have those insights driven by data, so that you really understand um, their needs as a as a consumer or as an employee. Um, but what we're seeing now that's really accelerating the whole um, digital transformation space is this new layer of differentiating um, technologies, um, building on that smack stack. We really get into things like AI, um, IoT, and some of these other um, enablers, if you will. And these are becoming, you know, really powerful um, points of differentiation that can really kind of sit on top of that um, that social, mobile, analytics, and cloud foundation. What's your take on the IoT marketplace and some of some of the drivers and the barriers to adoption? Yeah, um, so with with IoT, it's um, there's a, actually a lot of similarities with what we saw back in the RFID days, um, which was really the kind of the birthplace of I, um, of IoT back in about um, 1999, if I remember correctly, or the early 2000s was when the um, the MIT Auto ID Center got started, and they actually coined the term Internet of Things, and their vision at the time was basically um, thinking about RFID tags and being able to uniquely identify different products in the uh, in the manufacturing um, process. So any you know consumer products or manufacturing items, um, and having this concept of the Internet of Things. And of course today we're we're you know further along in terms of not only tagging objects and giving things unique IDs, but really thinking of the IoT as, um, you know, sensors and, and um, much more sophisticated types of applications. But really, if you go back and you th- think about some of the barriers and drivers to adoption for RFID, we're, we're really seeing some very similar things happening in the, in the IoT marketplace. So, you know, security, privacy, standards, interoperability, integration, all these things are things that the, um, the market and the startup ecosystem are really addressing to, to tackle and kind of smooth the road for um, broader IoT adoption. What are some of the future skills you think will be important for the next generation of employees in this area? Sure. I think um, – I think right now is a, a very exciting time because um, someone entering the workforce or you know even someone that's been in the workforce for a while, um, they have a lot of options um, in terms of wh- where you can specialize and focus. So you can either go deep into a certain domain area like, um, like IoT or AI, for example, um, or you can um, kind of go broad across the, the technology stack and think about um, you know, the broader uh, picture in terms of business strategy, uh, technology strategy, program management, um, business process, you know, how do you reinvent and reimagine business processes, and even strategic planning. So there's, there's a lot of these um, these horizontal functions that I think companies find extremely valuable, not only the, the technology domain and kind of going deep there, but also the, um, the broader kind of management um, sets of skills that you need to really kind of carve out Um, you know, new business models, new processes, um, you know, coordinating across the organization, driving innovation, and so on. So, um, you know, I think there's a plenty of opportunity both um, going horizontally as well as, um, you know, going deep in certain certain areas. Great. Thanks very much for your time today, Nicholas. We appreciate it very much. This is a very timely topic, and there should be some interesting things, you know, happening in the future, don't you think? Yes, yeah, certainly. And um, just a, a closing thought, I think the um, one of the interesting things here in the, in the DX space is, uh, you know, em- employees really don't have to be those, those kind of classically trained strategists anymore or come from a, a high end consultancy. So uh, kind of on the job experience and, and just basically having an entrepreneurial mindset um, can be re- really um, invaluable. And really, the you know, the best way to predict the future, as they say, is to invent it. So, um, you know, fantastic time to be, um, you know, playing in in this space and, and uh, you know, working um, either inside an organization or consulting to um, a number of companies. Super. So thanks. Thanks again for the, uh, the invite. Thank you very much, Nicholas. We've enjoyed it.
very interesting.